On today's episode, we're continuing our mid postseason evaluation of the Dallas Stars. And today I'm joined by Stars senior staff writer Mike Heike to break down everything that the Stars have done in the playoffs up to this point. We'll talk Jason Robertson, Jake Ottinger, Wyatt Johnston, so many other players, and look ahead to the Vegas Golden Knights series and talk about how the Dallas Stars can find themselves victorious. All of this coming up on a Thursday episode of Locked On Stars. Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey, coming to you on this Thursday, May 18th. And whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener, thank you for stopping by and making Locked On Stars your first listen every single day. Be sure to subscribe to the show on your favorite podcasting platform or on the YouTube channel. Uh, we are free and available no matter where or how you choose to listen and we got a special episode lined up today dallas stars senior staff writer mike heika joins to talk about the team and how they've performed through the first two rounds of the playoffs and what our expectations are for them going into round three so let's not hesitate any longer and jump to that interview right now joining me now on today's episode recurring guest friend of the show <laughs> se- dallas star senior staff writer mike heika mike how's it going thanks for joining us today Oh, it's going great. I, you know, I was talking to friends about, uh, you know, last time they went, it was in the bubble and we didn't get to really enjoy it. Uh, so this has been a nice run. And, and I feel like the whole community is getting, you know, revved up in it because the Mavericks aren't playing and, um, you know, the Cowboys are, you know, drafting or whatever. And the Ran- right. Rangers are playing well, but I mean, the Stars have a little bit of the spotlight right now. And that's kind of fun. 100 percent. It seems like there's new fans joining the the fan base right now, which I think happened back in 2020 as well. But uh, I'm right there with you now. The fans can go to the arena or they can at least, you know, go out and watch the game with friends at a a sports bar, a restaurant, places like that. And I think that's great for fan engagement. Yeah. And you just look across the NHL in general. And I think it's four markets that, you know, don't always get the most attention when you talk about national coverage. What's kind of your take just starting with the more broad view on these final four teams. Do you think it's good for the league in terms of expanding the game that we have, you know, Vegas, Dallas, Raleigh, North Carolina, and Miami, Florida as the, you know, the final four? Do you think that this is something that, you know, could take away viewership? Or do you think overall this is something that's good for the league? Uh, It's a little bit of both. I do think it could take away viewership because I do think there are traditional fans who want traditional teams. They want to see the Bostons or Chicago's or, you know, know, well, not Toronto, but any of the Canadian teams. Uh, but, uh, it also does spread the word and, and, you know, Gary Bettman said back in when stars came to, to Dallas, uh, and, and ever since then, that there is a footprint, uh, that they're trying to build and they've done a really good job of filling in all the gaps. And, uh, this is a series that, you know, you can have, uh, if you're in California, you can be interested in, in Vegas. If you're in Oklahoma, you can be interested in Texas. You know, if you're in, in the East Coast, you got Carolina and Florida. Um, so it is, I think it is a good balance. I think it's, you know, in the image of what uh, the league is trying to build. Uh, but that being said, I, it wouldn't bother me to have uh, some more traditional rivals in here. Uh, I compare, I always compare this to college basketball just because of the, the fact that there are a lot of people who don't care about college basketball during the regular season and then jump on board in the tournament. And then this year in the tournament, there were just a bunch of underdogs. And, uh, you know, so this same thing, I think uh, there's a lot of people getting interested in the sport right now. And they're looking around going like, who are these teams? <laughs> and I think I think that can, can be kind of fun. I enjoyed it in the in the final four. So I, I think this will be cool, too. Absolutely. And I think the nice part of it, too, is, you know, you look at these four teams and I, in my mind, they're all very qualified teams, Vegas and, uh, the, you know, Carolina. They kind of dominated or at least led the way in their division for the majority of the season. Dallas, even though they didn't finish top of their division, was up there for the majority of the year. And Florida, I think, is a very nice underdog story, <laughs> taking down two 
giants in the league, the, the best regular season team we've seen in the past several years in the Boston Bruins, and then maybe the most recognizable brand in the league in Toronto. So certainly plenty to be excited about with these teams, even if it's not traditional markets. But diving into the specifics with the Stars, they've made it past the second round, and they're back in the Western Conference Finals for the first time since 2020. Plenty of players that have played up to expectations and delivered on, on some heavy performances, Rope Hints, Joe Pavelski, and then even Jason Robertson to some extent. But I do want to start there just in terms with his goal scoring. What have you seen that's going on with him? At this point, does it really just feel like it's a, a matter of he needs to see a puck go in? Uh, because he's still making plays with assists every now and then, but we haven't seen him score in a while. And if I'm not mistaken, both of his goals this postseason are on the power play. What, what do you think is the key for the Stars to get Jason Robertson unlocked here in the postseason? It's been interesting. We've all, I mean, everybody talks, but we all are going to try and figure it out. Uh, I, I've heard an, uh, paralysis by analysis that, you know, he's thinking way too much. Um, he's a thinker. Uh, that's what he does. I mean, you see him on the bench studying every shift on the iPad. Uh, you see him, you know, Scott Wedgwood talks about at practice how uh, Jason's trying to place the puck. Uh, almost like a, a pitcher would place a pitch. And so he does all the research. He studies the goalies and says, okay, here's a weak spot. I don't have to shoot it hard. I just have to shoot it in the right spot. I have to locate it. And uh, I think that takes time. It takes an extra tick in your head. And in the playoffs, it, seem, it seems like time and space kind of shrink. And so I think that may be a little bit of it is that, his game is better when he has more time, hence uh, the power play scoring. Uh, you know, you get more time when you're on the power play. And so it'll be interesting. I, I do think that since they've got him back with Pavelski, uh, that's been a good sign. And he's getting chances. So the thought is it's going to go in at some point. Um, and, and that would be huge. I mean, that's the other thing that we talk about is that, you know, as good as the stars have been, they've been good without Jason Robertson really scoring. So what if he actually does start scoring? You know, could that push them, you know, one notch higher? Definitely. And that's the thought I've had too, and I'm sure many others as well, thinking, you know, you have all these other guys chipping in, even beyond the top line. Tyler Sagan's had a nice postseason. Evgeny Dodonov is making plays on that line with Jamie Benn and Wyatt Johnston. So you add your your leading goal scorer into the mix consistently. And I think that makes things a little more difficult for opposing defenses and opposing goaltenders. It makes things a little bit more yeah. intimidating, uh, 100%. And, and you stay on that top line with Joe Pavelski. He misses nearly that entire first-round series against Minnesota and then just comes back and lights up the Seattle Kraken with eight goals through those seven games in that series. Were, are you surprised to see Joe Pavelski playing to this level? I feel like, we, I mean, at some point, we should stop being surprised seeing you know him playing at this level uh, but I, I feel like a, a big part of it is just that motivation to to win that first Stanley Cup. Yeah, Pete said that. And Pete knows him better than anybody. Right. And even Pete said, he goes, you know, I, I probably should, uh, you know, be more surprised. He goes, but I know him. And, you know, that's the interesting thing about just, you know, being around him. Uh, he doesn't seem like he's 38. He seems like he was the same guy you know, when he got here or, or six years ago, um, he takes care of himself very well. He's incredibly smart. The old joke is you can't slow down when you're slow to begin with. So he's always <laughs> had to adapt to the fact he's not a great skater. Uh, so, you know, uh, Bob Ganey had the great quote uh, about Guy Carboneau, uh, where uh, he said, uh, well, you know, he, uh, he doesn't skate like he used to, but he sure knows where to stand. And uh, that, you know, on defense, obviously, that's key. But on offense, too. I mean, Joe plants himself in front of the net. He knows the areas. He has quick hands. Uh, so, yes, I, we should be surprised. Uh, but he just keeps doing it. And I, I do think uh, what you said, Pete said, everybody has said, you know, he's got plenty of money. He's got plenty of records. If he didn't want to do this, he wouldn't have to. But he wants that cup. And, you know, I think they've got a couple of guys, Ryan Suter, uh, you know, 1300 games. Uh, this is a big deal to him. Jamie Ben, all you have to do is look at that video of him sitting in the locker room after the Tampa Bay loss to realize how much he would love to get a cup. And you mix that with the kids and, you know, their, their energy and their, uh, you know, Robertson's an interesting guy. He just very smart. He, he reads a lot. He knows a lot. Uh, so he knows the history of things. 
And so I do think that this would be very important to him. It'd be important to all of them, obviously, but uh, there's different ones who, who I think really embrace the opportunity. Uh, so yeah, it's great. And, you know, we're only halfway there. That's a, the funny thing. I mean, that's what we were talking about yesterday with Pete. He's like, you know, what we've done is great. We still have a lot more to do. More Mike Heike in just a second. But first, I got to say thank you to one of the sponsors of today's episode, our friends over at Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs makes the most comfortable shorts and pants that you will ever wear. I look better and feel better when I wear my Bird Dog shorts. Their stretchy fabric makes everyone look good, and they're comfier than any other shorts or pants that you could ever own. They give you the freedom to wear any pair for any occasion, whether you're going out for a day with friends, a walk in the park, you're going out on a date that's super casual, you can just throw on a pair of bird dog shorts or pants and look good and also feel confident because of the comfort and you know you're the most stylish person in the place. And you can get your very own pair of bird dogs right now if you go to birddogs.com slash locked on NHL and you can use our promo code locked on NHL and they'll throw in a free custom bird dogs yeti style tumbler with every order if you're watching on youtube you can see i have my very own bird dogs yeti style tumbler uh, and the cup incredible the shorts and pants absolutely incredible so get some for yourself go to birddogs.com slash locked on nhl today yeah absolutely you, you got to win 16 games in there like you said halfway there eight wins out of 16 so far and i actually didn't have him on my rundown but you say his name and uh, I, I know that he's kind of turned some heads just in terms of how people feel about him in, here in the playoffs. But Ryan Suter, I know a lot of times was an easy guy to, to kind of use this, the scapegoat in the regular season, but in my eyes, and I'm sure many others as well, he's had a pretty nice postseason, uh, just especially defensively. It seems like he's playing a little bit sharper. I don't know if there was maybe some extra motivation in round one to eliminate Minnesota, but even against Seattle, he looked pretty rock solid. Is that kind of what you're seeing as well? Do you think that he's doing anything differently or do you think it's maybe just, the playoffs and and he's just entered into a different you know state of mind well it's interesting because i thought he was bad in the playoffs last year so you'd think a veteran guy would always step it up for the playoffs i, I do think you're onto something there i do think starting against minnesota was really good for him because uh, one he, he was laser focused uh and you know you'd think uh, okay everybody's going to be but he really was and then two that series brought out a little physicality, a little anger, a little dirty play, so to speak, in, in uh, Ryan Suter. And, and that's a good thing. I think you need that uh, in the playoffs. And the Stars definitely need that. I was looking at the uh, stats before the series in Dallas's uh, last in hits. And, you know, hits is a very weird stat. And who knows how it gets kept. But if you're last, that means your physicality probably isn't up to, you know, what other teams are doing. And so to have a guy like Ryan Suter in there, digging in, throwing, a, you know, a face wash or uh, poke check or, you know, things that after plays, those are good to me. And then and I think they keep him engaged. Um, and then the other interesting part, and I've said this since the beginning, on paper, that's the weakest part of the Dial Stars team is that group of defensemen. And when Essa and, and Yanni are not playing their best, I mean, it's Miro. And so to add Suter, to add Harley, that's been huge, I think, in the playoffs. I mean, that game, the last game, everybody played well, but you need, you know, to help Miro out a little bit. And and I think uh, Suter and Harley have been really big ads as far as uh, stepping up in play. Yeah, Tom Thomas Harley as well, I think, has looked really sharp. And I know he had some experience with the team in the past few seasons, but, you know, he spends the majority of his year down at the AHL level and is able to make that jump, and it seems like he's all but locked up a spot on next year's team. Would you agree? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I had a nice little chat with him the other day, and he said, you know, so because he knows Jake really well. And mm -hmm. Jake, when he went down, it wasn't fair. It was contracts. It was all this stuff last year, and I think Jake was really mad about it. And I asked Thomas if he was the same way, and he said he was early, but then once he got down there and got to spend some time, because part of the problem with being that guy on the bubble is you're down there. Now you're up here. Now you're down there. Now you're up there. Olafson, I think, had that kind of season. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I, it can be really hard mentally. And Thomas said, he goes, when I got down there, he goes, probably after the first week or two, he goes, I, I was there. 
and I was in it and I was part of that team and I was working on what they wanted me to do. And I didn't have any vision of coming up to the NHL. And, and that was a good thing for me. And so you look at him now, he is a much better defenseman than he was when he went down. So that year, you know, whatever, 60 games in the HL was huge for him. And then he's using it. Then, you know, as you step up, it's just like Wyatt. Uh, as the season's gone on, you step up and you get new challenges. And now from whatever you've learned, you should be able to handle these new challenges. But you don't always. I mean, you could fail and then get a setback. But both of those guys, they've taken a step each time it's, it's been harder. And then that builds your confidence and it just makes things easier. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, it's been really cool to see Thomas Harley kind of take these steps forward incredibly fun to watch here in the postseason playing defensively but also chipping in on offense and contributing yeah. to the rush and navigating the neutral zone and doing a lot i mean not quite to the level of miro haskinen but you you don't expect that for a guy who's still no. <laughs> uh, finding his way into the league but it seems like he's he's going to continue to grow that side of his game and could be a very nice piece to this defensive core over the next few seasons at, to go alongside haskinen and even guys like niels lundquist who i know the team is hopefully looking to develop a little more and a few good defensemen down at the prospect level as well, but kind of staying on the defensive side of the ice. Uh, of course, with the postseason, you want to win games in the playoffs. I hear all the time, you got to have good special teams and you got to have good goaltending. And Jake Ottinger has had a little bit of an up and down postseason, which I think is to be expected. How do you assess his game through the first two series? Cause I feel like against Minnesota, especially in that second half of that series, he was really lights out. And then Seattle, it's kind of been a little bit of a roller coaster. But at the end of the day, I, he did enough to get the team past the second round, especially in game seven. I thought he looked really sharp and honestly deserved the the shutout, if not for a goal in the last what yeah. 17 seconds of the game. Yeah. Um, excuse me. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, it's really interesting to watch him because uh, his mind is his greatest strength. He's 6'5", he's 220. He's an incredible athlete. He's a first round draft pick. Uh, he has an amazing pedigree, but his mind is the key to everything. And when you watch him, and again, starting in Minnesota was good for him too, uh, because that's where he's from. Uh, but the the fact that he can focus in and deal with all the trauma uh, is a huge thing. Uh, this last series, he got pulled twice. I and mean, this is Jake Ottinger. He just doesn't get pulled and he got pulled twice. Um, so that had to be hard on him. And then to respond to that, it, it's an impressive thing for a 24 year old. Uh, he gives a lot of credit to goalie coach Jeff Reese. Uh, I think Pete's mindset, uh, he doesn't, Pete doesn't get frazzled and that helps, you know, all the other players not get frazzled and especially a goalie. Um, you know, you hear the comparison of golf. Uh, you have to forget the last shot. Uh, you have to just concentrate on the next hole. And, and he does a great, and Jake does a great job of that. Uh, so yeah, it, it's uh, the the numbers are not what you would expect from him. Uh, and significantly worse than the regular season, which is generally feeling like well, Eddie's numbers skyrocket in the playoffs in part because of overtime and in part because you play one nothing games or two one games. And Jake's numbers have gone down. They're they're not near as what they were in the regular season. So he's dealing with all of that, but at the same point in time, he's comp compartmentalizing it to the fact that. All he has to worry about is game one in, in Vegas. And, and that's a great ability to have, especially if you're a goalie. We'll finish up our conversation with Mike Heika in just a second. But first, I got to say thank you to another sponsor of today's episode, our friends over at eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. And it's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure that every part you need fits just right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com let's ride guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers eligible items only exclusions apply definitely and i feel like there's something to be said now about this what feels like extended time off i know there was not as much 
rest, or at least it didn't feel that way between series one and series two. But now, you know, you finish series two on Monday and then you don't play again until Friday. So I have to imagine, you know, a little bit of time to rest and recover and refocus is going to be key heading into the Western Conference finals because he hasn't played on a stage this big. I mean, every every time the stars advance, he, he's going the farthest he's ever gone in his career. So I feel like it's beneficial for him to kind of get this time to you know, and the, and the entire team to kind of yeah. reset, refocus mentally uh, and get prepared for, the, you know, the second half of the postseason, like we said earlier, and a different player who maybe not the numbers you expect, but in a good way, Wyatt Johnston, who just turned 20 years old a few days ago. I mean, what were your overall thoughts on him here in the playoffs, but especially that goal in game seven? I, I feel like that was maybe one of the best plays I've seen from him all year. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll have this confession. I've made it in other places. I didn't think he was that great earlier in the year. I did. I was hesitant to even give him the 10 games because I didn't think he was great in Traverse City. I didn't think he was great in preseason. Uh, you know, it was just kind of penciled in that, you know, we got to get him up here. He's a good player. We needed to suffer through whatever we got to suffer through to get him up and running. And he has been so incredible. And again, the same thing you hear, okay, well, he'll hit the wall at 60 games. Oh, he'll hit the wall at 50 games. Or, you know, he'll hit the wall once the playoffs start. And he has it. He has just gotten better and better and better. Uh, I think living with Joe is a big help. I think the fact they have probably, what, five guys who are in that range, 23, 24, 20. Uh, Harley just is 21. So he has people around him who are young that he can share this with. And he has people who are around him who are old who can teach him things. Uh, so it's a really good situation for Wyatt. And then he's just... You, you hear this in the scouting report. He missed his uh, OHL draft year because of the pandemic. And so, you know, you hear, okay, we took him because of this. We took him because of that. He's really smart. He's good defensively. Um, but then when you actually watch him, uh, he, he's, he's a lot like Robertson in that he sees the game. He understands the game. He does little things. Um, you know, he's always prepared. I think that's important. And, you know, not to say that other guys aren't, uh, but at, at 19 years old and when you rely on skill, sometimes you just think, OK, I'll just go out there and play. And, and I, I think he puts a lot of work in uh, to be ready for this stuff. And then that goal, pff, I, I don't know how you do it. Um, there is a certain instinct to being a great hockey player and a great scorer. And, you know, your brain is working a million miles an hour and you get that puck and you start going like, why not just drive the net? You know, a lot of people would have gone around the back. A lot of people would have waited for help. Uh, but he was out there by himself. He had, the puck came off pretty hard off the end boards. So he's like, eh, why not just go to the net? And then the shot was perfect. I mean, right off his head, uh, backhand, roof, uh, not the easiest thing from a hard angle. Um, and it, it will it will live with him for a long time. That was just a, a one, a fantastic goal, and two, a series winner for a 19 year old. I mean, that's impressive. Yeah. It's been unbelievable to see his game translate from the OHL to the NHL. And now here in the playoffs where I feel like if he wasn't producing, people would, you know, understand just because he is so young yeah. and still finding his way here in the league, but he it seems like he hasn't missed a beat. And it almost feels like a, I know he was a first round draft pick, but a little bit later in that first round in 2021, uh, and feels like it, a, a great move from the stars front office and, and scouting staff. A uh, really nice pickup and hopefully a sign of things to come in terms of some other guys that have been drafted, guys looking to join the team over the next few years. But moving on to this series against Vegas, the Dallas Stars went 3-0 and against the Vegas Golden Knights this season. But obviously, things are going to be different in the playoffs and each team is at a different place now than where they were in the regular season. Just, just from your perspective and having watched, you know, so a lot of playoff series and a lot of regular season hockey too with this Dallas Stars team. How, how can fans who are watching this series kind of balance their expectations of the Stars were really good against the Knights in the regular season, but but the postseason is a different animal? Yeah, there's a couple of things. One, Vegas was beat up quite a bit, and that's kind of been their MO throughout however many years. They, they have battled injuries. They are not shy to put a player on long-term injury and, and miss him for the regular season just to have him ready for the playoffs. Um, they, and, you know, adding Jack Eichel uh, was it last year, I guess, midway through last year, you know, that's been a process of getting, I mean, he's a superstar player. And then to get him up and running and get him to where he can be Jack Eichel 
uh, that's been a process, but it sure looks like he's there now. So now you've got a different Jack Eichel, you got Mark Stone, you've got different, you know, players have kind of come up in, in, you know, the old line of Marsha show and, and Riley Smith, uh, they were up and down this year. They seem to be finding their stride in the playoffs. So this Vegas team is hitting on all cylinders. The one they played in the regular season was not. And then those still were two overtime, you know, wins. So it's going to be a challenge for sure. Um, that's a talented team. The, the one key the stars have is Vegas has used three or four goaltenders. Aiden Hill is playing really well right now, but he, he does not have the experience even that that Jake Ottinger has. If that's you know, if you can be any less experienced, uh, so they, they should have a an advantage in net. Um, but that's you know, that's a good Vegas team. There, uh, uh, Pete said yesterday, uh, Minnesota was physical, Seattle was fast, Vegas is both, and you know that's a challenge. I mean, you you can't just pick out and say, oh, we got to do this better. We, I mean, you got to do everything better and and so that'll it'll be a great series and you know on the flip side of that Dallas is is hitting on all its cylinders it's healthy I mean it's a team that missed Joe Pavelski in the first round it's a team that missed Mason Marchman at times uh but it seems like everybody's healthy uh most of the players are, are trending up and so you know you could be having two teams playing their best hockey of the year going up against each other Absolutely. And I know it was touched on a little bit right after game seven, but Pete wanted to focus more on the win against the Kraken before moving on. And, and I mean, of course, you know, he, he might say one thing, but be thinking another. Do you think there's some extra motivation for him going into this series with, uh, of course, the history of coaching there? Or do you think this is just, you know, business as usual and uh, like no extra motivation? Well, if I have to try and reach into his brain, <laughs> you know, you almost want to give him the advice of be Pete. Uh, I think there's a Ted Lasso line uh, where they say, thanks for letting Ted be Ted. Um, I think Pete has been very good in the playoffs because he's been calm, because he hasn't gotten emotional, because he hasn't let things you know, get to him. And this is hard. I mean, he, he, I love his phrase of there's a lot to unpack here uh, because he didn't he did not believe he deserved to be fired. Uh, he made he took that team to the Western Conference Finals two years in a row. They had the worst injuries in the league last year and missed the playoffs by one or two points, and then they canned him. Uh, now, that being said, they turn around and hire a new coach <laughs> and get right back to the Western Conference Finals. So management has to do what management has to do there, uh, but it doesn't mean it's not personal. Uh, he said on the radio yesterday, he's not sending Christmas cards to, to his old <laughs> bosses, uh, you know, that there is something there to, to I mean, anybody who's been fired. You're just like, OK, why? And, and I think he has a big why. And then the other thing is uh, his best friend in the world might be assistant coach Steve Spot. Steve Spot also was fired. So they both live there for three years. They both have a lot of friends there. And so it's, you know, it's it's like going home. Uh, it really is because they were just there last year. And I think they really enjoyed their time in Vegas. It's a great city. It's a great arena. It's a great organization. And so there's great memories, but then losing those great memories. I mean, it's like, you know, breaking up in a relationship. So I think there's a ton of emotion. My advice to him would be try and and rise above it uh, like he did in the Minnesota series, because uh, I think that's Pete is Pete. He needs to be Pete. Yeah, and I think, you know, in, in a lot of ways, that team, the, the Stars, you know, they'll play hard for him. It seems like that's something they've done well all season. And you even have Evgeny Dodonov, who has a brief history with them as well, and a weird history where he almost got traded to the Anaheim Ducks, but then that trade gets canceled. And so, you know, it's it's awkward for the rest of the time you're there, knowing yeah. that the team you're on wanted to trade you, but they couldn't, but you're, you're still stuck there. So I, I, I'm right there with you. I think it's going to be a fun series, both teams seeming to be peaking at the right time. And I expect it to go probably six or maybe even seven games just with how good these teams are. And, you know, if Aiden Hill keeps up his level of play and Jake Ottinger is able to kind of reset and get back to being the Jake Ottinger that many expect him to be, it, I mean, who knows how, how this series ends yeah. up. But it, it should be great. Uh, just kind of the last question, and you did touch on it a little bit when we started talking about this series. In, in your mind, what is the key to beating the Vegas Golden Knights? And if, if the Stars win the series, What's the big reason for it? I know Jake Ottinger might be the easy answer, but if it's not because Jake Ottinger plays well, what what else would be the reason? Well, and I think in game six against Minnesota and game seven against Seattle, you saw great team defense. Mm -hmm. Then their team, the Stars team defense, is predicated on we have the puck. 
We win the faceoff. We get the puck. We put the puck where we want the puck. We make you go through just line after line after line of obstacles just to get to our net. And when they do that, like I thought game seven was just a clinic. Uh, they, they made it so hard on Seattle and in doing so took a lot of the energy out of Seattle. And same thing with Minnesota. If you saw Minnesota in game six, they did not have that fire. They did not have the craziness that they had in earlier games. And it hurt them, I thought. If you saw Seattle, they couldn't get the speed going. They couldn't get through the over the hurdles. And so then now they're not, quote unquote, Seattle. So I think to me, the key is this is a really good defensive team. As much as this coaching staff has improved the offense, they were, I think, third in the league in uh, goals against, and I think second in penalty kill. And this is a really good defensive team. And I think that gets lost in the fact, like I said, I mean, it's not a great group of defensemen or whatever, but it's a good group of defensemen and it's a group of defensemen who can help control the puck. And then you've got four lines who hopefully can take that puck when they get it, get it into the offensive zone, you know, and, and spend time there. Um, and then when they're, you know, back checking, they're, they're filling their lanes, their sticks around the ice, all the little details you need. So to me, that is the key. If they play that game like they played in game seven, they will be a very hard team to beat. Definitely should be a great series. Tons of action coming up between the Dallas Stars and Vegas Golden Knights. Mike, thank you so much for joining today's episode. And hopefully this playoff run uh, continues on and, and we can have you back on either this series or uh, if the Stars make it to the next round, maybe talk a little bit of Stanley Cup finals. That would be nice. It's always fun. That was Dallas Stars senior staff writer, Mike Heike. A huge thank you to Mike for joining today's episode. I always appreciate him coming on, giving his insight, and I imagine many of you do as well. Always a great conversation with Mike. But thank you guys for tuning in to today's episode of Locked on Stars for making us your first listen every single day. Subscribe to the show on YouTube or your favorite podcasting platform of choice. You can also find us on social media. Just search Locked on Stars on Instagram or Twitter. You can also find me on Twitter personally at Dane double underscore Lewis. And be sure to tune in tomorrow as we finally, finally have the Western Conference Finals here. We'll be doing a preview show of the entire series with Tony from Locked On Vegas Golden Knights. So should be a great episode where we talk about the Stars and the Golden Knights heading into this series and see who has the advantage. And of course, give some predictions and some hot takes on who we think could potentially win this series and advance to the Stanley Cup Finals. Should be a great episode. Thank you guys again for tuning in today. Take care of yourselves and get ready for game one. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. <laughs>